this video, we are going to be giving a tutorial on how to create a model of a light frame wood structure using the Safi GSE wood application. The Safi GSE is a leading structural engineering software for the analysis and design of structures for wood, concrete, steel, and aluminum. The software is a great tool to help design and analyze various structures quickly with many automated design functions that still allows any user to personalize any of the design elements. The SAFI GSE supports the latest design standards for Canadian, American, and international standards for wood, concrete, steel, and aluminum. This video will present the design of a two-story light frame wood building based on the CSA 086-2014-2017 revision standard, but the procedures presented in this example apply to any other design standards supported by the software. This example will show all the modeling and analysis steps using the wood design tools available in the Safi GSE wood. This is a model of a simple two-story building of 3 meters in height on each floor. The building itself is 9 meters wide from A to C on the grid and 8 meters in length from 1 to 3. A central column is placed in the center of the building and each floor is supported by wood joists. Let's start with a new file by using the new command from the file menu. Since this is a 3D model, select 3D in the analysis mode section in the general options command from the tools menu. We will use metric units for this model but we'll use the imperial naming of the stand section of our wood model. The next thing to do when creating a new model is to define the grids according to the requirements of the model. Click on the grid button from the addition toolbar. We will use this grid for the addition of the geometry. First, change the plane of the grid to obtain a horizontal grid, plane X, Z. Next, Click on the Create Regular Lines button in the Lines along the X section. We will create two spans of 4500 millimeters. Then, click on the Create Regular Lines button in the Lines along the Y axis section. We will create two spans of 4000 millimeters. We can now press OK on the grid menu as well as look at the generated grid. We will now create the different wood sections used in this model. In the menu table, Section, Wood Sections, we will define our first section. We will select the New Section button on the top right corner and then select the rectangular Sawn Lumber tab. We will now select our wood section from the standard library. From the Wood CSA library, in the S Dry type, we will select the 2x6 section. The 2x6 will be the SPF species from grade number 1 and number 2. In the same way, we will also select a CSA S dry 2x10, also with the SPF species from grade number 1 and number 2. We will now select a column section for the center of the building. We will select the new section button and then select the glue laminated timber tab from the standard library and we will select Nordic, NL columns, 5.5 by 5.5 inches of a column. For the center beam section of each floor of the building, we will select the new section button and then select structural composite lumber tab from the standard library and we will select the Weyhauser, Paralem, 3.5 by 16 inches beam. We will also make some built up sections of 2, 2x6, two and 2, 2x10. Two to create these built up sections, we will go to the Tables tab, Section, Built up sections, and from this menu, we can select a new section and select the wood section built with vertical piles. From this menu, we will select the 2x6 as a source section with two as the number of piles. The section is fastened with nails. Next, we will make another built up section with two, two by 10, and the type of fastener set to unknown. We will also define the stories for our model. 
there will be two additional stories, both of 3000 millimeters. Before creating our wall, it will be useful to create the preset windows and doors for our model. By selecting the wall openings library, we can make preset openings that will be automatically generated in the walls of our model. Let's start by creating a window. The window's width and height are going to be 1.5 meters. The lintel is made of two 2x10 two sections and a king post made of two 2x6s. Two the rest of the sections are going to be 2x6. We can duplicate the section to create a preset door. We can also change the opening type of the door and set the width to 1 meter and the height to 2 meters. The section used for the door should be the same as the one used for the window. The wall of our building can finally be created in our model. Using the add a wall command, we can draw a wall along the front of the grid, following the axes 3a to 3c. Once drawn, we can enter the height of the wall of 3000 millimeters at both ends. Once the values are entered, the wall profile will be visible on the screen. By selecting this wall, we can edit its different attributes. First, let's see the wall type from the bearing wall to shear wall. The wall will be in a dry condition with no treatment. We will set the offset of each side of the wall to 150 millimeters to avoid conflict with the other perpendicular wall. The cord member will be defined as a 2x6, the dummy member will also be a 2x6. The spacing of the studs will be the default value of 406.4 millimeters with a 2x6 section. In the opening tab, we can define the windows in the door of our wall. We will go ahead and create two windows and a door. The first window is at X position of 1 meter and 0.5 meters in elevation. The door is at 4 meters in the X position. And the second window is at 6.5 meters, also 0.5 meters of elevation. For the sheathing, we will select the plywood from the Wood 086 library. We will go ahead and select the half inch 4 ply plywood. We will let the nails parameter to the default values. These parameters can be adjusted for each segments of the walls. For the anchorage parameter, we will select the apply simple anchorage on all segments command for the wall. Once this parameter is set, we can then press OK. If you select the generate wall button, all the components of the wall will be generated automatically. The wall can be regenerated at any time if some modifications were done to the wall elements. We will copy this wall using the copy tool to create a back wall. With the copy tool, use the copy command in the Z direction for minus 8000 millimeters. Once the wall is copied, we will remove the door and the window from its list of opening attributes in the opening tab. In a similar way, we will create a lateral wall for the building. We will create the wall along the C-axis of the model. Once drawn, we can enter the height of the wall of 3000 millimeters at both ends. We will not put any offsets in this section and only define the member to be generated as a 2x6 with the same default value for the other parameters. In the openings, we will have only one window at 2 meters and 0.5 meters of elevation. The sheathing will be the same half inch plywood as the front wall and will have the same anchorage parameter. Once these parameters are set, we can then press OK. Again, we will copy this wall to the other face of the building with the copy tool. This time, we will copy the wall in the X direction of minus 9000 millimeters. The wall of our first floor is now complete. We will now create the column of the center of the building. By creating a joint at the center by using the extrude command, we can create the column. In the same window we used for the copy, we will select the extrude parameter and in the Y direction for 3000 millimeters. We will now use plain view to show the grid on the top of the first floor. From this view, we will draw two beams crossing the building on the axis number two. After creating these members, we will select both of them and make them a physical member in the member attribute screen.
We will then put the hinges at both ends of the physical member and set the section properties to 3.5 by 16 inches for the section. We can attribute a value to this member and the section will be the 5.5 by 5.5 inches created previously. To create the first floor, we will define loading surfaces on both sides of the beams. For the building, we will use the joist distribution for the load transfer of these floors. In the joist submenu, we will define the spacing of the joist to 304.8 millimeters. We can also specify the types of the joist to use in the surface. In this example, we will use the generic joist 2100 11 and 7 eighths. In the diaphragm tab of this menu, we will set the parameter of the diaphragm caused by the floor. We will set the floor section as plywood. In the plate section, select the wood panel type and select the standard panel ply 2332 with six piles. We can attribute the section we just created to the section shape and enable the diaphragm option as well as the diaphragm forces transfer option. We will now copy the load surface in the other half of the building. We have now completed the first floor of the building. Don't worry, the next one will be much faster. To create the second floor, we will simply copy the first floor and execute a few quick modifications. To copy the first floor to the second floor, simply select all the elements present of the first one. Then, we will use the copy tool to create a copy 3000 millimeters in the Y direction on top of the current floor. Now, all we need to do is remove the door on the top floor as we won't be needing it. Double click on the second floor wall element and select the opening tab. From this tab, we can simply delete the door element from the list. Once this is done, we can finally generate all the wall elements of our building. To do so, click on the generate wall element in the wood toolbar of the interface. We now need to create the supports of our model. To create the supports, simply select the joints at the bottom of the model and select the joint properties. In the support tab, select the movement restrained in the X, Y, and Z axes, and also select the restrained in the Y axes. We will now place the loads on the model. First, we will define the basic loads used for this example. For this example, we will use dead loads, live loads, and snow loads. Each of the loads will be attributed to their respective load types. All loads added to a given basic load will have the same factor for a given load combination. Note, the new basic loads may be added at any time. The load will be placed on the load surfaces of the floor and on the roof. We will place a uniform pressure dead load of 0.5 kN on both floors. We will then place another uniform pressure live load of minus 2.4 kN on the first floor. And finally, we will place a uniform snow load of minus 3.2 kN on the roof. Our model is finally ready to run. We can now launch the analysis by selecting the static linear analysis and selecting the verification CSA086. Once the analysis is completed, we can look at the limit states for the wood results for each of the load combinations. It is also possible to display each of the results individually if desired. The solicitation of each member is displayed with a customizable color code. The members displayed in red are above the allowable limit state. As we see here, the stud under the central beam is not sufficient for our model. We will make some small adjustments to fix this. We will add another stud to the model directly under the central beam. To do so, we will select the adjacent stud from the top view on each side, and with the copy tool, we will create a copy directly under the beam supporting joints. This additional stud will help to resist the forces transferred from the central beam. 
we will also make sure that the new stud is properly connected to the bottom of the model with the attachment crossing member command. The members are now properly connected. We are now ready to launch the analysis once again. As we can see, the newly added stud is enough to resist the transfer of the loads from the central beam. We hope this video helped you to learn more about the design features of the wood module of Safi's GSC. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Safi's YouTube channel and visit our website www.safi.com to stay updated on the latest features of the software.